Janie Queen is a pretty little seven-year-old girl, her smiling face reflecting her love of life. Janie is full of energy and good health. Janie is also HIV positive. Sometimes, uh, she, you know, you can tell it kind of bothers you when if she's outside playing and she has to do something. You go, Janie, you know, come, come take your medicine. She's, she just, yeah. Uh, <gasps> yeah, you know, it's, it's such a bother to me. You know, it's interrupting in, in, in my in my day. But, but she uh, knows than, she yeah. has to take it. Other than that, she knows she has to take it. I take my pills because it'll keep me healthy, strong, and keep me from dying. Most children with HIV acquired the virus from their mothers. In the early days of the epidemic, women accounted for less than 10% of all people with HIV. Now they account for more than 25%, and that number is still growing. In the 1980s and the early part of the 90s, many HIV-infected women having babies suffered as they watched their children die after short, tragic lives. At the time, there was no effective treatment for the virus. Taking care of children in the early days of the epidemic uh, was difficult, and uh, we had many deaths. Uh, we had children who uh, progressed rapidly with their disease. They were ill in and out of the hospital constantly. The end point of the virus was death. Um, between 1985 and 1990, it was not unusual for us to go to, a, say, one funeral per month. Something had to be done to protect the children. Dr. Katherine Wilford is the scientific director of the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, an organization that funds research into pediatric AIDS. She was the first to propose giving the drug AZT to pregnant HIV-infected mothers to block transmission of the virus to the child. The results were dramatic. Without treatment, the mother-to-child transmission rate is more than 25%. When mothers are given anti-HIV drugs during their pregnancies, the transmission rate drops as low as 2%. Every pregnant woman should be offered HIV counseling and testing, and when that's done in a reasonable fashion, virtually all of them accept. Hello, Angel. This child's mother first came to the pediatric HIV clinic at Duke University when she tried to donate blood and was rejected because of a positive HIV test. She took every medication doctors could give her. The current standard of care is a combination of anti-HIV drugs for the mother started as soon as possible after the 14th week of pregnancy. And like all babies born to infected mothers, the little girl was given six weeks of anti-HIV medication, just in case. Now, after several visits to the Duke Clinic, the child has been declared virus-free. That's one of the best things of treating HIV, and doing the work that I do. It's to tell a mother that your baby does not have this virus. Between the years 1991 and 1994, there were an estimated 2,000 babies born with the virus in this country every year. Then in 1994, doctors began giving women anti-HIV drugs during their pregnancies to prevent transmission. Because of this, doctors now expect closer to 250 HIV-infected babies a year.